the angel of the Lord, here representing Jesus, has something to say, and we get to listen in. That's the plan here. So let's listen in. So this is verse 12. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which you were angry these 70 years? So here's a conversation between the Father and Jesus, and God wants you to know what's going on. There's a lot of transparency going on here. Satan doesn't want us to know what's going on. God does want us to know what's going on. So this is the plan here is to show us the bigger picture. So the angel of the Lord Jesus, he poses a question to the Father because he wants us to think about that. How long, how long until you have mercy on Jerusalem? And this would be a key thought in the mind of God's people. His judgments aren't bad for them, but good for them. But they just want to be out of the receiving judgment mode. And I get it too, don't you? God wants us to ask these kind of questions. And he's going to give an answer, but we'll get that, we'll get that in the next day. But for today, just it's interesting to me that God wants us, he wants us alert, he wants our ears open, he wants us to know what's going on, because he wants to include us in the great conflict between good and evil. He wants to employ us as his agents and for all the good things he wants to do. But are we available or are we off uh, jet skiing over there? What are we doing? It's also interesting here that God doesn't minimize, and the Bible doesn't minimize God's emotions. We have this kind of idea like somehow God would be some emotionless, unmovable, non-impassioned uh, being, but, but he puts his emotion right in there just with everything else. He is not afraid to say that he's jealous or angry or joyful. And so God doesn't hide his emotions, and the scripture does not hide from us, put God into some kind of a, a, a guy that just doesn't feel anything. God feels, feels a lot. He feels it when a sparrow falls out of the tree. He feels all the suffering and pain, and he feels the joy. So the Bible doesn't hide God's, God's, you could say his humanity from our standpoint, right? We are, in part, besides the rational and besides the volitional, we are also emotional creatures because we are made in his image. And so the Bible shows us that God can become angry with his people. He does become angry. And he doesn't hide that from us. I like that about God, that he's straight up with us always. And that is a pretty good thing. How would it be if God just kept all patient and nice and suddenly blew his top and lost his temper? Uh, that's not the God we see in the Bible. He he's tells us beforehand. He warns us. He tells us about consequences. And then sometimes we get to experience them straight up. No surprises. He is always who he is. Right to our face. We're going to hear the Father's response to... Jesus question tomorrow, but it is important to know that it's not a big mystery. God is not trying to put us into a big mystery. The Bible is very transparent. It's very rational. It makes a lot of sense. And it's not really that it's a big mystery and God is trying to pile on mysteries and make it hard. In fact, the Bible is easy to understand. The trouble is usually that we don't want to do what God has shown us we ought to do. And that's where the trouble comes. Let's see the response the reaction tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm.